It's showtime. Welcome to the OVE podcast. The Torg, Scott Torgerson with Sam Groom. Ohio versus everyone. We cover Ohio sports every day, Monday through Friday on the Menace to Sports channel. And of course, our new channel we want you to subscribe to. Move on over. Today's the last day for you to subscribe and get in on our sports memorabilia rewards pra- uh, program. Don't worry. We'll do one next month, but this one's a big one. Got some autographed helmets. Some rookie Buckeye cards, some Buckeye Buckeye gear, tons of stuff for you. Uh, Tons of framed pictures, helmets, footballs, tons of stuff for you. So go to youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone and get aboard. If you're watching on YouTube, remember the Super Chats. You can ask us anything. We'll talk about anything you want. And remember, if you're watching on our Meta Profile, to give the stars and we can talk about whatever you want on that platform as well. You can follow us on social media. Uh, We are on X. We are on Facebook. And if you're hurt at work or in an accident, let attorney Robert Sugar go to war for you at warforyou.com. Sam, what's up? How was Cincinnati opening day? Dude, it was, it was absolutely nuts yesterday. Um, The, it's kind of weird because we've obviously been going down for, for a long time now and, I think last year was the first year where I really, you could really see that it, you know, COVID, what COVID, like everything was back, absolute madhouse. When we were down there and I think we were in 21 and 22, it still hadn't fully recovered yet. But it's, man, it, it, I would say like, even if you don't like the Cincinnati Reds, I would highly recommend that you take the day. Don't even go to the game. Go down, go to the Finley Market Parade. The buzz around the city, I, I don't know how people or if people even work in Cincinnati. Just go check it out. It's its fantastic. And I i don't know. Uh, the good news is I don't know if the last time I went to an opening day when the, Red, the Reds actually won a game. So there was that payoff as well. I, You know, I i like it better. No offense, Guardians. And I, don't, I just like the food options. I like the ballpark better. Um, in and out, maybe a little bit better. I mean, both parking situations are not great at either ballpark. You know, there's no really no easy way in or out. Uh, but I just like the food options. I like the ballpark a little bit better in Cincinnati. I went to a uh, game on my kid's birthday. The little guy is a Reds fan. And so uh, we took him. So yeah, I'll have to take him to a skip school and take him to a Reds game at some point. Sold out yesterday. Oh, absolutely. It's 44,000 plus. Um, I will tell you, so back in the day, back before the banks was built in Cincinnati, like going to a game kind of sucked because there was really, there was like a bar or two that was a little kind of close. Like they didn't really have everything right there. Whereas in Cleveland, like you could, you know, you got everything downtown right there. So, so Cincinnati's in my, my opinion, way a much better place to go watch a game. Now I know people will fight to the death over the Indians and going to the, whatever it's the progressive field or the Jake or whatever the hell it's called now. That's fine. You know, there's only what four like support your team. There's the, um, late night lesbian bar. And then there's two, just main two bars. Correct. At, at the Indians game. Am I missing something? There's more like there's the, the lizard and, uh, there's just a bunch of those old lizard. And next to it is the lesbian bar. Or at least it was a lesbian bar. I don't, this may, this may or may not shock you. I haven't been to a lot of Indians games lately. Gotcha. I hear you. Yeah, I think there's no, like it's a good time. I, I highly recommend it. Like if you've never been, go go for the event. Don't necessarily go for the team. It's it's just an absolute blast. So, and if you do it enough, parking's not as bad um, as it you know as it seems. But no, it was a good time. Had a great time. Yeah, there are ballparks across the country, and people can chime in on the chat. Like where if it might not be your team, but it's just an experience, right? Mm-hmm. I, I've been to Bush. I, I'm a Cubs fan, and I hate the Cardinals. But going to Bush is a great experience, man. The ballpark, going to Shannon's, just the atmosphere, a lot of bars, a lot of people drinking, having fun. Of course, going to Wrigley. The Ricketts family, of course, are buying everything, and they're trying to capitalize and take every single penny you have. But it's still fun now until they buy everything around the area and then charge you for walking. Um, but but that's just a good atmosphere. So there's some parks across the the country where you just go and have a good time. And so, you know, Reds opening day, I wish baseball, Sam, would not do what they're doing now. And, and listen, it's it's been a long time, but baseball was better when Cincinnati owned opening day. It was just better. Agreed. And, yeah, the whole, the, the, the international series is weird to me. And then they usually have a, 
don't they typically have a game in prime time on Wednesday, the day before opening day? It just doesn't make so, sense, well, you know. The way I see it, it on, if it starts on Monday, they'll do a Sunday night baseball game. ESPN will do so. Do it. So I think it just kind of depends on what day of the week it, baseball starts. Sure. Yeah, I, I just to me the season doesn't start until the first professional team to ever exist plays their first game. That's my opinion. You know, if you if you differ, you know, so be it. But you mean baseball in South Korea isn't the official start for you? No, no, I uh, I, I don't celebrate uh, baseball in, in Seoul, South Korea. Sorry. Hey, a couple of things that we got coming up today. I want to let people know about. And the poll question is: If Julian Sayan and Will Howard are close, who gets the start week one? That's the poll question. You could chime in right now on social media or on the chat, either on YouTube or Facebook. Want your thoughts on that? Uh, we've got some Browns news. Every Browns fan, listen to this podcast. Tell your buddies to listen. When we give you this news, you are going to be super pissed. And it's not about an acquisition. It's about Roger Goodell and his greedy little sausage fingers in the pot again. And what he's doing is he's screwing over you like never before. He's he's bending over with no lube. He's bending you over with no lube. And the story coming up with the Browns, it's legit. It's not fake news or anything like that. What he is doing to not only Browns fans, but to all football fans is bull crap. So Bengals news as well. Tons of stuff around sports, Sam. So uh, glad you had a good opening day. Now, I caused some crap on social media, not on purpose, but I'm watching the Reds game on TV. And I said, you know what this is? It's missing right now. What this game is missing, it's missing Marty Brenneman. And if Marty Brenneman's gone, I started thinking about the Tom Brenneman situation. Now, let me be perfectly clear because listening is a skill. Tom deserved to get fired. And what happened was just, you know, getting fired, saying what he did. And then the the apology with the home run afterwards was just bizarre, awkward, and not a good look that he continued the call, right? None of it was good. Now, I happen to know Tom a little bit when I was in Phoenix. The sideline reporter, that's where Tom was at, Diamondbacks. Uh, the sideline reporter was a friend of mine. Sideline reporter went to Tom said, hey, man, my buddy does mornings at QF, or not QF, at KDKB. What if we bring him on the pregame show and we, you know, like when a team's in town, we'll bring in food or make him do a hot dog eating contest against, we'll just make him do stupid crap, you know. And Tom could have totally said no. He didn't know me. He just knew me by me interviewing him. So Tom said, yeah, bring him on. We'll do fun stuff. So for about two, three seasons, I did things with the Diamondback pregame show. He would bring me up in the booth, him and Gracie. Gracie would be smoking like crazy in the booth. And I just thought Tom was a cool dude. Got to know him, talk to him, sit up in the booth, just talk baseball with him. Nice guy. Come in studio, BS. And then I continued to have him on when it was the common man in Torg on 97.1. Now, you might not like Tom Brennan. And that's cool. You don't like his call. But Sam... The the thing, the point I'm trying to make is selective compassion is BS, where yeah. people will argue about two political candidates who both have rape allegations on them. I don't care if they're true or not, but you seem to battle to the death about these two bozos. Uh, there are actors. Mel Gibson, racist tirade about Jewish people on the planet. Did you see Hacksaw Ridge? Did you see Passion of the Christ? So the selective outrage on Tom Brenneman, because he did something really stupid, is amazing to me, Sam, when people worship, go see movies, buy CDs, listen to me. Michael Jackson admitted that he gave little boy booze and slept in the same bed with him. That's the very least of the allegation. That's actually factual. He admitted to that. So for people out there to bury Tom Brenneman, Sam, to me, it's listen, you might not like him as an announcer, but get listen, he did sensitivity training. He spoke with uh gay groups, he did what he had to do, and he is humbled, he is educated, and regardless of whether you want him back or not, he lost every his occupation. He's humbled. So I don't get why people have this grudge against him when the guy went out, educated himself, and made him a better person, but yet you'll go to a Mel Gibson movie. So you notice how the people that were the, with the outrage didn't call him a liar, by the way. They didn't say he was wrong. He just said what he said probably wasn't the best way to say it, right? Um, what do you mean? His apology? 
no, what he what he actually said to well, get. He made a homophobic trouble. remark. He was wrong. He deserves to get fired for it. He'll tell you that. That's what I'm saying. But nobody said nobody's saying what he said is inaccurate or wrong. He, what they're saying is you should not have said it that way. Well, I think there's San a Francisco lot. has a very large gay population. Yes. Last yeah. time I checked, it was the way he, he phrased it. He just said a no no. One of the words you don't say unless you are a part of the that particular uh, sector or group of people. But that's another argument for another day. Were they in San Francisco? They were going to San Francisco. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave that there. Uh, Tom Brenneman is is kind of gray area with me. I think Marty Brenneman was the best that ever is, the best that ever was and will be, right? Like, well, I love Bret Marty Hart, Brenneman. But yes. Bret Hart has nothing on Marty Brenneman. Uh the problem I have with Tom Brenneman is he knew he, he's, his last name is Brenneman, so he thought when he would stroll into the into the booth and call games that he could get away with saying things that his dad could just because his last name is Brenneman. Where to me, it's you kind of got to go earn it. Like you've got a guy your father's you know, he earned it with the Cubs and the Diamondbacks and all the jobs he's done and being a national announcer. No, I don't. I mean, really? I, I think he tried to. I think he tried to get away with stuff and, and kind of had this arrogance about him that because he was Tom or Marty Brenneman's dad that he could just strut into a room. Um, I don't mind. So is it Sadak? Is the guy John Sadak? I believe he's is his okay. name. He's all he's right. not bad, but he's grown on me. The one thing I will say about the Reds, and I didn't used to like Brantley, but he's grown on me a little bit too. Oh, Brantley, my UDF ice cream. Yeah, he's That's sucked the freaking. Hit. He's a to- hill jack, but he's grown on me a little bit. There, Sam, there are things, some chocolate fudge, UDF, Sam. But the, like Barry Larkin, absolutely not. Uh, uh, Chris uh, Welsh, the creeper, absolutely not. Like the Reds need to figure something out because it's not easy to watch or listen to games uh, on on TV or radio for me as a fan. Yeah. It's just it's just not good. But yeah. you know, I, I think you're right regarding Tom Brenneman. Do I think he's gonna coming back would would cure? The, the the ills of what I think the Reds are in right now as far as who's calling the games on TV and radio, no. But he's he's better than some of the guys that they have on. And the guy's paid his you know, debt to society. You know, maybe it's time to bring him back. Didn't Desmond say he would bitch slap someone too? Didn't Desmond say that on TV? He'd bitch slap someone and nothing oh, happened to Desmond. Hey. I mean, people make, listen, Tom goofed up, deserved to get fired, but kudos to him. Because he actually, you know, you know, walked the walk, talked the talk, walked the walk, and d- actually went to like the sensitivity training and met with groups, and actually, you know, he got humbled by this. I mean, it's not a good feeling to wake up in the morning. You're the most hated person in the world, and that's what he experienced. Dude was humbled. I get. I've, I've, Sam, you're not the only person who said like Tom had an arrogance about him. I think that's being good at your job. I think you do get arrogant, and I think sometimes when you're on top you get carried away with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm successful. I'm whatever. Hell, Common Man and Torg, uh, Torg and Ellie, I mean, successful shows. I'm not like that, but I'm sure there was a time with Mike and I where, dude, we're pulling 25 shares or top-rated sports show, one of the top ones in the country where you kind of get a little big, big-headed big uh, about it. I mean, dudes get big heads um, in the entertainment industry. So maybe he had that. I guarantee you he doesn't have a big head now. No, yeah, he's... He- it's it's I you really you get perspective when what you've worked hard to establish or build is taken away from you. Yeah. And we could probably argue all day long about whether or not the punishment fit the crime per se. But he yeah, you're absolutely right. I think one of the biggest issues that, that I have with Brenneman is and, and you kind of hit the nail on the head right there is like I hate watching arrogance. I like confidence and I know there's a thin line between confidence and arrogance. But when somebody is arrogant or I perceive as arrogant, I, they just kind of, you know, I shut them off in my brain. But, you know, I also haven't heard from him in, I think, four years. Is That's how long ago it was? Three years? Something, something like that. that. I just, so, I hate selective compassion. Where yeah, you have too. You, you argue at the dinner table with your friends and family over who's president when they both have allegations, right or wrong. But yet right. you want to bury Tom Brenneman over here. And Tom Brenneman actually has sympathy and feels bad about what he said right so yeah let's yeah somebody somebody goes at trump because he's got rape allegations but they continue to blindly support you know biden for example it's like well wait a minute you got your guys accused of the exact same thing that you're accusing this guy of like like you said that's it's it's 
but you selectively select, being stupid, right? But Sam, you they select who they want. So if you're no, yeah, the, that's that's my point. Like right, Biden's guilty and Trump's innocent, and yeah, you'll blindly Trump's support innocent. one yeah. guy while using what they're accused of uh, against the, the the guy you can't stand or the opposition. Oh, I get it. And by the Drive way, I'm not judging any political party here. You like whoever you want. I just don't care. I just don't. Yeah, like this is not a that. this is not a political conversation or political podcast. But it, it's uh, how do I want to put this? I would say if if you there are certain protected groups across society, and if you say anything wrong, you're going to get the book thrown at you. And I think to a degree, again, if it's been four years, which I think it has, I think it's time maybe the guy kind of gets some kind of gig back. I think when do I get a when do I get to be a protected group? Stupid should be protected. I should be a protected group. I'm stupid. Stupid should be yeah, absolutely why does- protected. Why does your why does your boy Desmond Howard get away with some of the shit that he says on live TV? Well, he's he's stupid. He gets protected. He's in the stupid group. I should get protected too. We should all stupid people should be protected. Yeah, we should it's, all be. I, you know, you've convinced me. Like I, I, he's better than Tom Brennan is better than some of the guys they currently have. But yeah, they, he's they had he, his punishment has been served. Like let the guy let him live, right? Yeah, and that's my whole thing. I don't care. You might not like Tom Brenneman and think he, I think he's good. I think he's good. I thought he was good in football. I enjoy his broadcast. I didn't even thought that before I got to know him a little bit. Um, but I get how people don't like him, or you might not. There's people I don't like that you might like out there. So there's can, can we agree that Marty was really, really good, though? Yeah, Marty was great. Dude, Marty. So we'd have Marty on, Common Man and Torque. And I, I kind of poked the bear one time with Marty. And I said, hey, man, you and the Cubs fans really don't get along. And he goes, talk, let me tell you a story. You know, he goes, last time I was in Chicago, I told these Cubs fans I would be in Wrigley Field before the game if they wanted a piece of me. And he goes, I swear to you guys, 45 minutes before I had to be in the booth, I walked down, walked around Wrigley Field, and none of these damn Cub fans wanted a piece of me. It was just fantastic. How he would put, he, he, do you remember when Marty went at, in the playoff game? And I think it was Bronson Arroyo screwed up with guys on base and Marty just lost his mind on Bronson Arroyo. By the way, Bronson still lives in Cincinnati. Great dude. He does music. He's very talented. But uh, Marty just lost his mind on Bronson Arroyo. But if you talk to those red players there, and I've talked to him a couple from Brandon Phillips to Bronson Arroyo about it. Marty had car blanche to do whatever he said, whatever he wanted. He was respected by the players, so he could say whatever the hell he wanted. He got so again back to back to being early. Merck is texting us with some great Marty stories, and I'm saying, Merck, I'll send you the link. Come on, dude. Back, back to earning it. Like you're right. And I I know he said a couple things one time about Joey Votto that pissed off Joey Votto to the point where there were almost fisticuffs there. But Marty That's was a spicy Joey meatball, man. Handle. He you you never you never had to think, you know, which side of the argument or what Marty thought. Like he was going to tell you, and he's going to put it very bluntly. Like if the team was great, he said they were great, or if a player, right? But if they were bad, he also he didn't sugarcoat anything. He he told you what he thought and what he saw, and really didn't care about any perceived repercussions coming be, coming because of it. Yeah, and don't think uh, you can't get fired if you're an announcer. What's the old? Uh rumor about dusty baker and steve stone and there's really no denying it that steve stone got let go when dusty baker was the uh manager of the cubs there was a lot of like bad blood there between them so i mean don't discredit uh a announcer getting fired because of something a manager or a player thinks did i ever tell you the mark grace told me the story did i ever tell you the and I probably have it on this podcast. The Mark Grace, Harry Carey story about them getting into a fight. Grace, oh. Grace criticized, or Harry criticized Grace during a game, right? Oh, you know, Harry was kind of like, if you watch the post game show, they called it the 10th inning. Harry had like Budweiser's, like six of them behind him. And then Steve Stone had like cigars behind him. That's what they did. Harry drank beer and Stoney like smoked cigars all game. So Grace Grace got called out by Harry, and the reporter said, you know, like, Harry called you out, and Grace said, tell Harry I want a piece of him. But if you know Mark Grace, he was kidding around, right? So, uh, you know, Harry, you know, Harry then finds out that Grace said, tell Harry I want a piece of him. 
So the next day before the game, Harry comes walking in the locker room and says, I heard you want a piece of me. Starts putting his finger in Grace and saying, you want to go? Let's go. And Grace just started laughing because it's Harry Carey. Can you but imagine like, having having the cart like a real life cartoon character like Harry Carey coming after you trying to throw down? Yeah, and I would just I'd piss myself laughing. Oh, and the thing is, it, with whether you like or dislike Tom, the one thing about Tommy is one of those last last great baseball announcers where now the guys are afraid to say anything. Guys are afraid to take chances. Guys are afraid, like Marty Brenneman. Look at the guy. Was it the Baltimore Orioles announcer? Last year, Google this, the Baltimore Orioles announcer got, and I don't even know if he's back, but got suspended for like three months and he didn't even do anything. He slightly, he lightly criticized the team and he got suspended for like the rest of the season. And he didn't even say anything that was in, and Sam Google it because I didn't, even, I watched the, the playback of that. And I just, I was like, how did this guy get taken off a broadcast for yeah, that? It was, it was completely benign. He, uh, his name was Kevin Brown, but he basically was suspended by the team after comments about the team struggled in recent years. Like he talked about basically how they struggled. And it was one of those things where unless you knew the guy was going to be suspended for it, you wouldn't have thought twice about it. No. Yeah. But you know, that's, that's one of my criticisms of the, one of the many of the Blue Jackets announcers. It's like you guys need to be a little more critical. Stop trying to oh rimmers. You, stop a, trying to polish a turd and tell me it's a diamond. You know. Well, there's stuff they call Rimmer a little nickname behind the scenes. I could I could think of a couple. Yeah, but it's it's Rimmer's the ultimate. Listen, Rimmer's the ultimate company man. He would tell you that he loves the Jackets. He's not going to criticize them. He's just not. He's not going to. That's just not going to happen. I don't think any announcer is going to criticize the team nowadays. Marty Brenneman is a gem. I wish, I mean, Marty's still healthy, looks great. You see him in the commercials. I see him out and about from time to time at different functions. I don't see him. I see him on, you know, video, obviously. But he looks great. And you just wonder, man, if I could just go back and have Marty Brenneman just watch one game, current game with Marty Brenneman again. It just No, he was absolutely. He was, the, uh, he was the honorary captain yesterday. He was on the field before the game. So good. He was so good. Harry Carey. Listen, Harry Carey was like the worst play-by-play guy ever. You ever heard the Andy Bennis story? And the Cubs. Who's Andy Bennis? You don't know who Andy Bennis is? No clue. Oh, Merck, I hope you're watching. Te- text Sam who Andy Bennis is. So he was a pretty big pitcher in the day. And he played for the Padres amongst other teams. And at Wrigley, it has the starting pitcher. And it said Bennis SD. And his name is spelt, I believe, B-E-N-E-S. Right, yeah. Venice, and Harry's doing play-by-play. He goes, Andy Baines from South Dakota on the mound today. Andy Baines from South Dakota, and it's just he would do stuff like that. And Steve Stone was so good at his craft. He go, he like I remember the one time. He go, remember Hideki Arabu? I do remember Hideki. And Split Harry, finger. Harry, what time? Because I'm a I watched every Cubs game growing up, like every Cubs game. Harry would go, Hi Hideki Arabu, Hi Bay. A new young Japanese since Hideki, I bet, ah. And then Steve Stone would just jump in and go, Hideki Arabu, Harry, is what? Bright young right-hander from the Jet who had an ERA of 320. And and Steve Stone was so good. Harry would go, had the, the, the back, the, go, you know. And Steve Stone was just so perfect at cutting in. And then see, because Harry was really bad at the last 10 years of him doing Cubs game. I mean, horrible. You want hey, to uh, take a look at the girl in the tube top? Hey. So do you want to you want to hit break and then let's try to get Merck to come on? But what I was going to say is, you know, we've talked talked a little baseball. Let's hit the the trivia quite or the uh, poll question. Excuse me. Uh, we will talk a little bit of Buckeyes recruiting news and then uh, break some Browns fans' hearts. Yeah, that news for Brown and NFL fans. It just really sucks. Remember today's poll question: If Julian Sane and Will Howard are close. Who starts week one? Hey, let's take a break. We go to war for you. At Sugar Schnarr Trial Attorneys, we don't back down. Accident? <laughs> Call us today at 877 war for you or visit war for for a free consultation. Know your rights because results matter. That's 877-WAR-FOR-YOU. 877-WAR-FOR-YOU. For you. Or visit war for you.com. War for you. War for you.com. 
Hazmat Ohio is a firefighter owned and operated all hazards training company specializing in custom safety training for your company's needs. They offer corporate CPR, AED first aid, confined space rescue standby, spill and emergency response, and they can train firefighters, industry safety teams, and employers. Call 740-507-8802. That's 740-507-8802. Thinking of buying or selling a home? Give Lauren Torgerson a call with Next Home Experience. Lauren has been servicing the Columbus metropolitan area for 10 years. So whether you're a first-time home buyer, considering building, want to upsize or downsize, Lauren can help you with all your real estate needs. Get a free market analysis for your area and get started working on making tomorrow's dreams happen today. Call or text Lauren at 614-296-3952, 614-296-3952, or email at torgersonlauren at gmail.com. The OVE Militia, you guys are the best. Thanks for the comments, man. We appreciate it. It's the OVE Podcast, Scott Torgerson, the Torg, Sam Grooms. We do Ohio sports every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, great comments. Troy, you're the man. Uh, Harry would do names backwards. He would. And Luis Salazar go, Razzle ass, backwards. Luis Salazar backwards is Razzle ass. Uh, it God. still might be one of the best characters on SNL that Will Ferrell did. Uh I tell you what, those Cubs teams suck, but they had a lot of character. The games were fun. The games are better when you're bad and you have a good announcer, right, Reds fans? I mean, games are better. When you have a bad team and you're mad, that's why Zach show's popular, our show's popular, the morning show I do with Jerry's popular, because we're not politically correct. We still cross the line, get in trouble. Uh, people go, I can't believe you guys said that. Uh, I can't believe you get away with that. I can't, you know, we're a podcast, so it's different, but I think there's a need and a want for unfiltered commentary, as long as you're not douchebags about it and say like racist, homophobic crap, you know, that's, you know, who knows who's doing that. But um, as long as you're not doing it and you're shooting the crap straight, there's nothing wrong. Too many people are afraid of offending people and that's an issue. And usually it's time you're not offending people. It's the Karens who are offended for the people. Yeah, i.e. Washington Redskins. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see the Bill Burr bit where he says the middle-aged woman has destroyed society? (laughs) It wasn't his last special. It was the one before. He says the middle-aged women who get offended by everything. Oh, he said a racist term. I'm going to report him. The middle-aged woman really has destroyed society, folks. Yeah, and it's not society's fault that you're offended, by the way. I'm going to throw that out there for you. Yeah. Uh, By the way, today's poll question, let's get to it. Uh, And remember to subscribe to the new YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. Today is the last day you get in our sports memorabilia awards for this month. Then next month we'll do something else. But we got a good one. We got autographed helmets and uh, a Buckeye beer sign. Now, a carved one, Uh, not like plug in and neon light one. Uh, autographed memorabilia. If you're a sports card collector, I just have this gem of a uh, CJ Stroud rookie card that someone's going to win. So a lot of stuff. Subscribe, you get free stuff. Hey, who? Doesn't By the win? way, we're we're 50 away from 2,000. So let's go, militia. Pull up. Let's go. Let's get. Well, you 50. Tell your friends, damn it. Yes, or just create fake accounts. <laughs> That's what I do for gambling sites. Honey, guess what? You have 150 in bonus bets. Because you signed up for FanDuel or whatever. Uh, Wait, do your you, kids turn 18? Or, do, uh, is it, or is it 21? Uh, no, it's 18 because my son told him a kid in high school has got a gambling problem. <laughs> he did. Imagine he goes, that. I, I don't want to say the kid's name. He might be watching. Mm. How does Mr. Torgerson know I have a gambling problem? Well, Timmy, it's because you, your, your kneecaps are broken every other week. <laughs> yes. You're, uh, you, you've lost a finger. <laughs> Today's poll question, by the way, if Julian Sand and Will Howard are close, who starts week one? And we bring this up because, Sam, there's a lot of news out of practice. What are we, seven practices in? But there's a lot of news that Julian Sand looks really, like, really good. Like, usually you expect a freshman to come in and struggle. And they're not saying, people are not, are not saying that he's as good as Will Howard. They're just saying he's growing at such a clip that when they come back to camp, this gap that's there might be a little 
closer than what you think. And then two, there's kind of levels to this, Sam. If they're close, who starts week one? And then two, let's say Will Howard does win. Is Julian saying the backup? I think that that's far more likely, in my opinion, than Julian saying starting over Will Howard. Keep in mind, and I know I keep saying this, this is a huge year for Ohio State's coaching staff and Ryan Day. If they don't, if they don't get it done, and when I say get it done, I'm not saying win the Natty, win the Big Ten, win it all. If you don't beat Michigan this year and not win the Natty, we got problems. We got big problems. We're gonna have a, in my opinion, we should have a, a head coaching search. So oh. in my I don't think Ryan Day wants to put Ryan Day doesn't want to put all of that stock into a true uh, I'm sorry, he'll be a true sophomore, correct? Or a true freshman. No, he'd be a true true freshman. True freshman. That's not happening. I'm sorry. It ain't happening. Um happened, I know I know you did a recording. Happened. You did a recording yesterday. And the more the more I'm thinking about this, and I understand like this were we're seven games or seven practices into spring practice, like it, it still bothers me substantially that we are literally this close to going Kyle McCord to Will Howard and or Devin Brown. I, I it just it bothers me that they haven't been able to go out and get somebody that's a little more electric, a little better than those than those options. Like I understand transfer portal. I understand the game is, game has changed that. I I completely understand that. But I think we were I think we were excited about Will, Will Howard coming in because we we knew how bad or average Kyle because he wasn't was. Kyle McCord. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like now that now that that the honeymoon's over, it's like okay, well, is he that much better? It's just there's there's plenty of weapons around him, and he brings a little different set of skill set. But let's be real too, like. I don't know that I don't know that Will Howard's the guy. And you know, thankfully you probably only have to use it for one year, but I, I don't think there's any chance Julian Sand is starting over Will Howard if it's close at all. And I, I don't I don't know that a high state Ryan Day is gonna let it even get that close to begin with. Last freshman who started TP, right? Or yeah. did Todd Beckman play a series in that USC game and then TP came out? I I thought there was a game before the SC game that Todd Beckman started, and okay. then they basically said TP starting the SC game. Uh, someday when we get into Buckeye football season, I will tell you the story how Todd Beckman found out he was not starting or a interesting story about that. He found out he wasn't starting from wasn't somebody starting else. Not from... for... No, no, no. He found out from Tress, but I will reveal the story. When we get to football season, I'll tell you. I just think it's an interesting story of how it all went down with TP starting over Todd Beckman. And I'll say this about Todd Beckman. Todd Beckman, Beckman has always, always been classy Beckman. about it. Todd Beckman is a classy dude. Classy dude. Totally classy. I'm just curious, Sam, if if it's close between Will Will Howard and Julian Sane. And I, I think Will Howard, there's a million reasons why you start Will Howard, right? There's a million reasons why he is in the pole position. Unless something bad happens from now until the start of training camp, he's going to be the starting quarterback, right? Well, think Julian Sand could close the gap, though. But Sam, they need to kick teams' asses, unlike last year, and they need to get quarterbacks and other players more time. We talked about the receivers not getting enough time. That's because we did not do our job this season and kick the crack out, crap out of teams outside of Western Kentucky and allow guys more playing time. We need to stomp people's heads in when we are playing and get big leads and allow people to play more. Think about, th think about how far we come and, and just how like, we talk about silly season, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two practices in a uh, spring practice. We're talking about how bad Will Howard looks. Devin Brown's really spinning it. He's the guy going forward. Fast forward to now. We're not talking about Devin Brown at all. No, we're not hearing anything about Devin Brown. Like, and that's why I tried to caution everybody a few weeks ago. It's like, listen, there's going to be so many different stories, so many different insiders saying different things. Like, there's so much time between now and the start of next season. So much can happen. You know, injuries could happen. God forbid that happens. Players could play better. You know, Julian Sand could, could grasp the entire offense real fast, look better than Will Howard, look better than Devin Brown, look better than everybody else. But it's just ridiculous that – this is where we're at. This is the this is the level of speculation we're getting to. And then the other thing too that really again bothers me is we don't have 
we don't have the guy coming in that's just taking the bull by the horns and running with it. At least that's not what it sounds like. Competition's great. Competition's going to make the team in that that quarterback room better. But the fact that we don't just have somebody running away with this is a little irksome too. Yeah, we discussed it. You know, Sam was off yesterday. I did uh, a whole segment on this yesterday of like, how did we get here? How did Ohio State get a year where Kyle McCord's your quarterback and then the next year we had to spend a million dollars for a guy who got beat out in Kansas State? So it's kind of a look back of, hey, at Ohio State, you should never have back-to-back years like this. I get that you're going to have years where the quarterback position's not where you want it to be. But if you're going to be Georgia, look at Carson Beck. I mean, not bad. And then this year he's a front runner for the Heisman. So Georgia went from a really good national championship quarterback. Remember, we're talking pros here. We're not talking about always got to be the top overall pick. We're talking college. A guy who won the national championship right into Carson Beck. And then Carson Beck started increasingly getting better throughout the year to the point now where you look at Carson Beck and he's going, well, that dude's like a top five quarterback in college football right now. So at Ohio State, there should never be back-to-back years, Sam, where you have Kyle McCord and he wasn't a dominating quarterback and that's fine, but he was an average quarterback and don't give me the stats because I watched the games and we weren't crushing teams like we should. And then to Will Howard, where we got to pay a million bucks for a guy to come from a team, a B-level school where he wasn't the starter. I'm not saying he's not going to be better than Kyle McCord. I'm just saying we should never be in this position. I completely agree. And that it's it's weird that again, quarterback's the most position or most important position in, in all of sports. How is it that we ha- were able to rebuild an entire defensive unit and scheme in such a short a period of time, short amount of time, but somehow, some way we can't spend more time or effort in, in recruiting and development on the most important position on the field. I, I just don't, I don't understand it. I wonder how people would feel, Sam, if the transfer portal didn't exist or you had to sit out a season, would you be confident? Now, if Kyle McCord's playing in that Missouri game, do they win? I think they do. I think they win 17, 14, 20. I don't know, 14. man. That, that, that statue standing back there behind that offensive line wasn't going to do much either. Yeah. Um, I just think they would they would make a play, and there was no and Marv the safety blanket was no longer wasn't playing that game either. Yeah, it's debatable, but you'd have a better shot, right? But oh, you'd absolutely. Come, you'd come into the season going, all right, Comma Cord's going to be better. The offensive line has to be better. Uh, I I think you're a lot more confident about this football team with Will Howard than Comma Cord uh, coming back. Kyle McCord than Will, right? Is it is it because so he, three scenarios? Is it because he's not Kyle McCord? Is it because nobody really watched him at Kansas State and it's just new and shiny and we think he's going to be good? Or is it because he's a legitimate number one guy that's going to lead Ohio State in the offense to the promised land? I think it's I think it's that's that B number the the second option there where it's it's a new guy, it's a new toy. We don't really know how good it is or how good he is, but he's new. He's got to be better. I think it's that reluctant optimism I don't know how uh, how to really put that but it's just it's the new thing he's got to be better we don't really know how good he was where he used to play even though he got played out by a true freshman I think it's more that option than it is the guy's actually better than everybody else in the room well I think he's better because he can do more things right because comma cords limited on third and four he's not scrambling for a first down I mean you know what you get with a comma cord where you're if you're a defensive coordinator you don't have to keep an eye on Kyle McCord and worry about him scrambling and making a big play when the game's on the line, right? If you're driving down the field and you need a quarterback, if the quarterback, you know, scrambles to his left or right, Will Howard seats open field, there's a first down. They're moving the chains, right? With Kyle McCord, he's got to throw the ball for the first down. So I think just of what Will Howard can do, you know, throwing the ball, at, like I mentioned, I've watched three Kansas State games that I have on DVR. You're welcome to come on over and watch them, Sam. Um, you know, the throw in the football, I don't see like a big difference there. Uh, what I see though, is a guy who can scramble out and make moves with his feet. So it'll be up to, you know, what they do offensively to kind of use that as a weapon. You know what I mean? I think Chip Kelly's smart enough to realize, all right, I got a guy who can move here. So I got to use that to my advantage. So I think that's why you're right. It's the shiny new thing and he's not comma cord, but he also does different things than comma cord. It's they're not the same dude. Here's something I guess that would help me make my point. Uh, 
Ohio State, the Buckeyes have offered a 2026 quarterback. Noah Grubbs, Florida, uh, Florida quarterback, six foot four, two hundred five, but he's not currently ranked or rated by any ranking service. So my my thing is, if this guy's good enough to be offered by Ohio State, and I understand that's two two years out, like this guy should be on somebody's radar to where there's something to read about him, or there should be some kind of ranking attached to him. You know, that, I guess that's kind of my point. Is like, but everybody's offering this kid though. Uh, the Noah yeah. Grubbs kid. I mean, but, but isn't but do you not see that a little odd that this kid's getting offers and getting recruited and getting phone calls, but there's nobody that's no kind of ranking services put a grade to him? Yeah, but I, I think they've probably seen the tape, right? They've seen him playing a Maybe. game. I Maybe. mean, what is what is the ranking service though, Sam? So I work for 24-7 sports and I go to a high school game and I look at I maybe go to a game or I'm watching his tape and I go, Oh, he's a five-star guy, always oh, a four-star guy. Right. So you're talking about a, a couple guys who write for a publication who go to a game and then go, oh, yeah, I watch a bunch of video on this kid. I watch his game. I mean, you could go to huddle and watch, but I, yeah, I've watched his game. I think he's a four star guy. But that's just a guy. He's not a coach. He's not right. a head coach. He's not an offensive coordinator. He's just kind of like a recruiting expert. So I think these coaches get in, they watch the tape, they look, they see the same things. They go, wow, what this kid did fits our system and we need a kid and they just offered him to they know he's not going to accept they they i think that the buckeyes i was reading today because we're going to talk about david sanders a little bit right i think the buckeyes have their eye on like 15 different offensive linemen coming up so i mean they're talking to a lot of kids you're going to offer a lot of kids these kids know too i i think that grubs kid has a bunch of offers from a, a you know at least like five or six top teams looking at him. you want you want to hear the big names i've got them pulled up yeah. Got uh so we got the U. Uh we got Penn State, we got Michigan. We have uh Ole Miss, Auburn, Colorado, Nebraska, Arkansas, North Carolina, Florida, uh Syracuse, Oklahoma, and he's made some unofficial visits to both Alabama and Georgia. Yeah. So there you go. I know this weekend is a big weekend for recruits coming in this weekend for uh, spring practice. This is a huge weekend in Columbus. There are a lot of guys coming in and visiting and see how it works. Yeah, you've got a five-star 2025 offensive tackle, David Sanders Jr., visiting Ohio State this weekend. Uh, and you've got four-star 2025 defensive tackle, Landon Rink, uh, set a commitment date for April 3rd. So I think he's um, going to Texas A&M. That's all the rumors that he's probably Texas A&M bound. So, you know, take the check. Take the cash, young man. If and then transfer in the portal after your freshman year. And you get more cash. So there you go. I uh, To me, the biggest target is the offensive lineman. Oh, yeah. You need to. You need, yeah, you need a you need a bunch of really good offensive linemen and you need depth there because as we've seen both in the professional and the college ranks, who knows what's going to happen. Want to hit this right before? Well, I, well, let, let, let's let's do one more quick thing here because we we're talking about offensive line. Sure. Will everyone hate me if I mention the booger eater had a really good observation, or should I save it? Will people hate me if I tell you that booger eater Harbaugh actually said something intelligent? Well, we got that in the in the uh, Brown story, so you want to save them both in that hit? X? Okay, all right, let's hit it. No, hit the super chat. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Rose, appreciate the five man. Uh, we've seen more. We've seen more freshmen play. I'm not if that's an acronym. I I don't know what it is at big schools than we think. Will Howard remains a very ordinary quarterback. Sane or Air will find the field. And Rose, I would normally agree with you, but I think the reason we saw, part of the reason we saw McCord start over Brown last year is because he's been in the room for three years. There's the experience factor. You don't you don't want to risk your career or your job at a high state on a true freshman. That would be my only pushback on that. Even though normally I would agree with you, if you've got a guy that's a junior or a senior or a red shirt, uh, a junior, a guy that's been in the room for two, three, four years, like if you don't got it now, you're not going to get it later. So you might as well start the guy that's come in has the tremendous amount of upside and he's got more more time to be quarterback at at your program. Tell you what, though, I make sure he gets time. I make sure if if the gap is close and I'm kicking team A's ass week one, 52 to three, and it's the third quarter, do I go off the bench and put Devin Brown in or Julian Sayan in? 
right? Because if I put Devin Brown in, then I'm telling my team that next year, or there's an injury to Will Howard, Devin Brown is my starting quarterback. But if I do Julian Sayan and put him in, I'm basically saying, all right, Julian, you're the future of this team, and it's your job to lose from here on forward, right? I think yeah. that's what you're saying, aren't you, Sam? Yeah. I, I would say, it again, in a situation where you don't have so much riding on this next season, as far as potentially your your employment with the university, I would say that if, if it's even close, it's anywhere near close, you're probably starting the, the true freshman. Yeah. I mean, it's but that would also that would also be problematic to me that you've got a guy, and I understand he's he's coming in and he's learning the system just as as he's just as new to the system as Julian Sand is and Will Howard. But like that that's still a problem to me. Why is it a problem? Because they had a need at quarterback, and they had a guy they had to pay a guy to come here and do it, or they didn't have a quarterback. They, remember, they didn't have Julian Sand when they got Will Howard. They had Devin Brown, Aaron Noland, and the TikTok boys. For the, for the Keyhole. same <laughs> Lincoln Keyhole, for the same yeah. reason that last year when we didn't have a quarterback named two weeks before the the season, yeah, and you know he wants to name Devin Brown because Kyle McCord had been in the room for three years, two years, whatever it is, and the fact that you're going that late and you still haven't named a guy tells me that nobody is beating the other guy out. So then yeah. he falls back on experience. That's that that's my point between Will Howard and yeah. Julian Sam. Yeah, I wish you, don't, you, you were, have a guy that's not openly in, uh, winning the job. You basically have two guys that are just kind of eh, and you have to pick one because somebody has to start. Yeah, I, I wish I didn't do that topic yesterday because we could have, you know, I and if you want to go back and watch the show, I do 20 minutes on how that that's what I found problematic is the thing that I found is how do you have two years in a row where this is your option? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's scary. I don't I don't find a, a problem with bringing in Will Howard. And then if Julian Sayan beats him, I don't. I don't have an issue with it. I don't, it doesn't reflect on the Buckeyes to me poorly, just from the standpoint, you needed a quarterback. Uh, you missed out. I thought they should have got Cam Ward. There were other guys they missed out on. Will Howard was the best available. And then Julian Sain falls in your lap. Right. So I think that's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're right. I mean, again, we're set up, I think in the quarterback room for the future, you know, after next year, but don't let this happen again. You like, can't, seriously, you, you can't. absolutely can't. You, you've you can't. got, one of the best rosters you've ever had as a program coming back to this year. And the last thing you want to do is let the quarterback be the weakest link. Yeah. And that's the way it is right now. The right side on the offensive line and the quarterback right now are the weak links of your football team. Luckily for this team, though, I think everything else is so strong outside of that is that it'll probably make up for it. You're going to have a successful season and should win a natty. When we come back, yes, it's true. The booger eater said something smart in Browns fans and NFL fans because this pisses me off as well. You are going to be pissed off the OBE podcast. Hey, let me tell you about my guys at River Valley Restoration. If you have a project, I know it can be overwhelming. Let them take the stress out of it for you. Give them a call and it doesn't matter if you've got a huge project, small project, or somewhere in between. They will take care of you. Free in-home consultation. They do roofing, siding, gutters, windows, doors, decks attic insulation. I love that they do bathroom and kitchen remodeling. They can get pricey, but not at River Valley Restoration. The project manager is going to talk with you, work with you, picking the materials, picking out everything, taking you through the progress every step of the way, keeping you informed. I love that at a price that you can afford and you know you're going to get a great job. 10-year workmanship warranty, double the industry standard, and a 50-year roofing warranty. They offer financing as well. 740 740- 785 5000 or at rivervalleyrestoration.com. If you're having an event, everybody needs to be safe. Medical emergencies can happen any place, anytime, anywhere to anyone. You have to be prepared. Event Medical Staffing of Ohio has highly trained medical staff. They provide life saving care when needed, basic and advanced life support care to events all across Ohio. Festivals, concerts, fairs, motorsports, any sport you can think of, including film and television. They provide training programs as well, including first aid and CPR. So give Event Medical Staffing of Ohio a call at 740-403-6739 or at eventmedstaffing.com. All right, we're back. OV Podcast, Ohio versus everyone. The Torque, Scott Torgerson, Sam Grooms, 
every single Monday through Friday at three. It's Solo Cup Friday, by the way. So hopefully you're drinking with us. Just don't be behind the wheel. Uh, so we appreciate you. Appreciate you uh, watching. Please tell your friends there's two stupid idiots at three o'clock doing a podcast for you. Whatever type of social media platform or streaming platform you watch or listen, we appreciate it. New YouTube channel, please subscribe. Hit like right now, too. Like the channel as well. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. Now, Sam, should I, should I, we do the Harbaugh stuff first and then the Browns news? Yeah, probably. Okay. The booger eater. It's both, they're both are probably going to piss everybody off. The booger eater said something intelligent. It was, well, first he said something stupid. It was J.J. McCarthy about, I've never seen anyone on a pro day look as spectacular, I'm paraphrasing, look as good as he did. But then later on, when he was interviewed by the press, he made this comment about the draft. Uh, he said that everybody thinks we should take wide receiver. Everybody thinks we should take running back. Everybody, the defensive line, saying we need help defensively. He says, what if we take offensive line? Now, I know in 21 and 22, or 22 and 23, I believe, or no, 21 and 22, they took a left guard and a left tackle. And Harbaugh says, but for the wide receiver to get open, doesn't he need an offensive line to prevent the defensive line from tackling and sacking your quarterback? Like, really, it doesn't matter who's playing wide receiver. If you don't have time to throw... Yeah, and you can scheme. Be open. You so can scheme the ball getting the guys in their hands. I agree. However, his point is central point is yes. If you're going to throw the ball downfield, you have to have some time to do it. With running back, Austin Eckler's gone. Who's your running back? Well, the offensive line need to open up holes. Defensive line. He said to the defensive lineman, he said, "Listen, defensive lineman told me they wanted depth help. They wanted a first round pick." He says, "Listen, do you want to stay off the field and have drives, or do you want to be on the field all day? Because you're off the field." If I get an offensive lineman, I just thought it was a really good quote by the booger eater to make the offensive line the strength of your team. And the Michigan offensive line was really good this year. So make the offensive line strength of your team. And then your entire team is better. Yeah. I can't believe I'm quoting the booger eater, but he said something intelligent. Yeah, not exactly revolutionary, but it is. But Accurate. no one talks about that at the fifth pick, Sam. Everybody's talking about running back or wide receiver and different position, tight end. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, and then on the, why don't you break the Browns news? This so, is gross. I don't know that it's been completely and one uh, entirely confirmed yet, but it looks like the Browns will be playing uh, the Eagles' first game of the year on a Wednesday evening in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yes. But. Well, we know it, the Eagles are playing – and then one of the Browns players said, we are playing week one against the Eagles, and they do match up during the season. It will not be on national TV. It will be streamed exclusively on the Peacock, on the old cock. You have, folks, the start of the National Football League, and you have to have a subscription to Peacock to watch. That is the most asinine thing I have ever heard from this league. What a money grab. And kudos to Peacock for getting it done. Because the only thing you're watching on Peacock is WWE. It really is a low-level streaming site. But what a genius-ass move by Peacock to get that done. And if you're sitting at home and you want to watch the opening night of the NFL, or maybe it's, I don't even know the time zones. I think they're same time zone as us, right? Because they're right below us. Uh, you have to get a $5.99 Peacock, Peacock subscription. And guess what? Here's the good news. If you keep it through the end of the season, you can watch the playoff games because they got the playoff games as well. Uh, I think it sucks that the NFL is going in this route, that week one of the opener, you can't watch the NFL unless you have a streaming service. Now, I get it anyway because I'm a wrestling geek. But for you out there, just nickel and diamond you. I don't think this will destroy the NFL. I don't think it'll make you want to watch less. But it is just a crappy thing to do to the people that made your sport the number one sport. Yeah, it's and, and correct, me, correct me if I'm wrong, too. With Peacock, if you have a like a Direct TV or uh, a YouTube TV, any of these other logins, you do you get Peacock with that? No, you don't. It's a straight Ooh. buy alone streaming site. That's that's a yikes. Five ninety nine, and they'll probably raise it a buck because they know you got they got you bent over. Yeah, that's no a big lose. yikes. Don't even so, spit on it. 
No lube. <laughs> First game of the year won't be on Thursday. It'll be Wednesday this year. Yeah, in Brazil. <laughs> It's all about still, the money, isn't it? I'm still trying to figure out how much how much they're going to have to spend on security for that one. Oh, probably a lot. They you don't know, care. there's going to be there's going to be some news and some stories coming out of that trip. Yeah, I just think it's sad. It's sad for Browns fans. If you want to watch your team, you got to get it. And you know, Browns fans will do it. Is there anyone a Browns fan out there? And chime in on the chat. Is there a Browns fan who's not going to subscribe to Peacock so they can watch their team Week One? They'll it'll be one of those things where either they subscribe or. They split, they split a month with their buddies and they all use the same login or something like that. I did Netflix. My buddy TJ gave me his Netflix password. And every year, the Netflix, oh, we're cutting down on that. I used it for like seven years. And Netflix would say, oh, we're cutting down on that. I just recently just changed it because I wanted my, I forgot his password. So I wanted it on another TV. And I go, well, I'll spend the 15 bucks or whatever to get it just so I had it on a different TV. But I used it forever. So yeah, you could do that if you want. Or. It's or get a fire stick, folks, and watch some videos. Be careful. Yes. Just YouTube. Just, well, you know, a VPN. YouTube, how to, I don't know, maybe something like, I, it's coming to mind, Cody, I think, maybe something uh, like that. Sports Fight is the, I don't know. Sports Fight Cody. is the best one. Or Sports Fire. It's called okay. Sports Fire. It is fantastic. Not that I know anything about it. I just. Oh, you yeah, you've heard about it on YouTube and stuff. It's like. Yeah. Ads. The, having problems with the Reds and the Indians and the Bally's app. VPN. Yeah, yeah, just do a little research. It's not, it's pretty easy to get it around if you if you have a fire stick. It is. It is. Um, the government's out to get you though. They will get on you, so get a VPN. That would help too. Yeah. You would hit X. Uh yeah, I'm just kind of looking over the show sheet. There's nothing really uh we need to hit today. So beautiful. We'll we'll save it all. By the way, I finally save read that all. ports line article that you were yeah. talking about. Uh, there was some shit in there I completely like blacked out on. I forgot. And then he left stuff out on like the Adam <laughs> Foot stuff, the uh, Todd Richard stuff. How Todd it was, it was a it was know. a it was a very good summation of the twenty four years of the Blue Jackets. Yeah, does not paint a very rosy picture, folks. Oh, well, they're awful, and it's not changing. I I I. Are uh, you ready for what's on X? Let's do it. Uh, let's start basketball. And I didn't, I forgot to label these folks. So if I'm out of order with sports, just blame the booze I've been drinking all show. Uh, here we go. What's on X? Uh, Evan uh, Damarell, the Cavs in collaboration of the Cle with the Cleveland Cl Clinic and Bedrock are unveiling renderings of a new downtown practice facility, which sit along the river, groundbreaking for more than 210,000 square feet facility is to begin at the end of the year. You know what this is, though, Sam? Let me throw this out there for you, your opinion. I think this is finally this team moving on from LeBron. The reason why they have their practice facility where it is now, that's where LeBron wanted the practice facility. LeBron is no longer there. This team is making arrangements to move along with LeBron. They are, I believe, the third team in the East. Sam, you're going to have to watch some Cavs playoff action because I think uh, Donovan Mitchell, ouchie, but if Donovan Mitchell's there, I think this Cavs team is decent. In the East, you never know what's going to happen. So I'm looking forward to the Cavs in the playoffs and actually doing something to finally move on from LeBron. Wouldn't so, it be great if they won or at least got to the NBA Finals without LeBron and then LeBron's sitting at home because they're like the 10th seed right now? Well, I know there's the play-in, but you know what I'm saying. I'm going to go ahead and tell you I'm not watching. You're not going to watch the Cavs? No. Nope. What a don't hate. care if they're an Ohio team. It's basketball. It's the NBA. I but it's do Ohio not versus everyone, Sam. That's fine. That's fine. You can, I tell you, fill me in. All right. Awful announcing. Bill Simmons predicts the new NBA deal will have a big streaming component. We just talked about it with the Browns. That's unfortunate. This is the way it's going. And I get a little bit of it, Sam, where if you want to stream regular season games, I don't think anyone gives a crap. Look at the Blue Jackets. I mean, they're on ESPN+. Plus. I don't think re anyone really cares about well, regular season games. Was it the NBA you said, or was it ESPN? Is it oh. is both? So I look at it two different ways. The NBA is rolling in cash, yeah. Even though the viewership of their game is dwindling in the, especially in the United States, they're great at marketing. E yes, ESPN is doing everything they can to try to salvage spending the money on the rights to the NBA because they're losing their ass on it. Yeah. Uh, more NBA. This is TMZ on X. Caitlin Clark yet to mull the big three offer focused on the NCAA tournament. I mentioned this yesterday on the podcast, how my thought was she's not a sideshow. 
She's the best women's player to come along in a long time, and she should go to the WNBA. I'm surprised, Sam, she hasn't flat out said, no, I'm not playing in the big three. They offered her $5 bucks. Ice Cube said, I'm not telling you what I offered her, but we did make her an offer. Um, now idiots are saying, oh, she should play in the NBA. Uh, come on now. Uh, I don't even think she should play in the big three. Unless, can't she make five? She, should she take a money grab of $5 million, play in this league? And then go to the WNBA afterwards. I think she can. I, I don't know when when the, the the leagues would overlap. Five million dollars is a lot of money, but it can is. we can we all agree that she would get absolutely exposed in that? I yes, especially like that's not a that's not a. There's no chance. Like high school boys would would torch her, let alone semi professional. You know, former professionals. I don't know which. You know, old Division One basketball like. She's going to get exposed, and it's going to be real ugly. But exposed probably, what? Exposed as a not as good as guys. Well, yeah, like we think that she's going to come in as she, you know she's going to average twenty five against men. No, I but I I don't know if she's going to get exposed. But I think like because well if okay she, the the um uh, not at that level the agenda how about that yeah. or the you know yeah. whatever they're trying to push that that women and men are equal in in, in sports like I don't. She's got five million reasons to do it, and if she's going to get paid, why the hell wouldn't you? Because you're still going to go to play in the WNBA. It's not equal from the standpoint of who's the dude, may, female swimmer, male to female swimmer that was on Penn, the guy who was like ranked like two. Leah, Leah Thomas, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I I think when she was a male, he was ranked like two thousand. Then he does the upper part, and then he's like top women's swimmer. Now, different sport, obviously, but I think we know that. She Come on. so she's not going to make anywhere near five million dollars playing in the WNBA in year one. Yeah, but she's why the hell would she? Why she's the not hell a she play though? What's she's that? not a sideshow. She shouldn't treat herself like a sideshow. Five million dollars? Well, what's she going to make in the WNBA? Like I don't know what's the highest. Con- I mean, she wouldn't make that in three years in the WNBA. No, a straight sell. You're correct, but I'm thinking she's going to get endorsements. She's still get endorsements by doing the the, the uh, three on three. Not if she fails. Her market she'll be in the happen. WNBA next year with five million dollars in the bank. Okay, I, I I I hear you, but does it does it hurt her brand if she goes to the big three and doesn't succeed? No, I don't think it hurts her brand because I think the second she goes to the NBA, she'll still be able to produce. Okay, I just don't think she's a sideshow. Is my point, and she's better than that. But if you want the money, you're right. Five million dollars is a lot of money. A lot of that's a lot of money. See what the t- highest played WNBA player is. Uh, awful announcing here. Let's hit that. Mike Pereira returns to Fox after missing 2023. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even know Mike Pereira was off last year. I guess it was Dan Bandino or whatever his name is. I didn't even know he was gone. Blandino. Dean, Fox. Dean ba- Blandino, is that his name? Oh, yeah, it's Ban. You know it on this show, Sam. If you don't know it, you make up. The make it up, time. baby. So uh, the highest baseball. paid player. Highest paid player in the WNBA is making 252 grand a year. Really? Think yeah, about but that. that's not endorsements, right? No, that's salary in the WNBA, which she's still going to be able to get endorsements on her own. I don't know. I, why wouldn't she? I, I if I'm in her shoes, I'm I'm strongly considering it. Yeah. Uh John Morrissey on X. Dave Roberts took over Dodgers manager in 2016. Since then, they've won 755 regular season games, the most of any team. The Astros are second at 715. Well, yeah, you spend a hundred million more than everybody else. How many more World Series did the Astros have than the Dodgers? And do not count the 60 game season 2020 World Series for the Dodgers. Well, there's two years. The tw- no, the Astros, I don't think you could count the cheating years for the Astros, though. That was two World Series. So I think they're tied. Two to one. Astros yeah. won two years ago, right? Yes. So and I think then the, the cheating year. We don't count cheaters. That's like counting Michigan's wins. We don't do that. Um, the difference some- the difference is one one group cheating can be proven. The other one is one hundred percent entirely speculation. Which one? Astros. No, the Astros got they got suspended. They played the management is- got suspended. They cheated the. Oh, you're team. right. What was the uh, bald guy? Hang on. Keep going. Mister Clean. 
Uh, football news. The Arizona Cardinals, Bears, and Jets to bring in Roman Aduze for visits. The Washington right, wideout produced 10 100-yard games last year. I think he is an under-the-radar player because of his return abilities, uh, punt returns. I think someone's going to be very happy they didn't get the top two receivers. Now, obviously, you'd want neighbors or uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., but that's a good – Aduze would be the top receiver in many years' drafts. So getting him as a consolation prize, so to speak, is not a bad thing. I'm not sure which this one. Is. Oh, here you go. News on the Blue Jackets just for you, Sam. I know Elvis has the contract, but Tarasov seems to be like he's trying to prove he wants the number one spot. No, he stinks too. No, uh, not not since February 11th or 10th. He's playing very well. Okay, that's a month ago. Oh, for a month. Since, a- since. That's, Yeah. That's blue jacket hockey. A guy has a good month and everybody's like, oh, ah. He he is the number one now. Elvis is not. Elvis will either be traded or bought out in the in the uh offseason. I, I think you're uh correct on that, right? And but I think they need to bring in a one. I think you if you let your bring, bring somebody in to push. In. You you need two, you need two goalies anyway. Why wouldn't you? Absolutely. A final one on what's on X, uh ESPN's John Anderson. Retiring from Sports Center in June, John will step away from his anchor role. 25 years with ESPN. What a good run. Yeah, I know John. He was the third guy in Phoenix with Paul Calavisi and Vic Lombardi. And me, Golick, and another guy, Bruce Jacobs, challenged those guys to sumo hockey. So the guy we were with, Bruce Jacobs, was a smoker. And right when we hit, those sumo suits are a lot, by the way. It's a lot. You're hot. They're heavy. They're like 60 pounds. It's like kissing the boots, you know, like Gene Simmons and those guys. So we hit the ice. Bruce Jacobs pass out on the side of the ice. Can't <laughs> even, can't even like walk or stand because he's a smoker. He hits it. So Golik takes me and says, I have an idea, Torg. And he pushes me down on the ground. He goes, just stay there. And I laid in front of the goal in my sumo suit and they couldn't score on me. And then Golik said, hey, anytime you get the puck, just throw it to me. So every time I got it, Golik, Golik was on the other end of the ice and I would throw the puck. And this was when hockey was fun and did stuff like this between periods. I would take the puck and I would throw it down on the ice and we smoked their ass because everybody's fallen. And when they did get a good shot on me, they couldn't score. And then I would take the puck and I would just grab it and I would throw it to Golik. And sometimes Golik would fall and, you know, they laugh and, but we crushed him. But John is a good dude. I'm happy for him. But I think John realized 25 years at ESPN, living in Bristol, ugh, time to yeah, Good for him. He, he was one of the good ones, it seemed like. I want to hit Thank this. You. I do want to hit this super chat before we bounce. Alex Frederick, we appreciate the two, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Texas, Georgia, Oregon, nobody else is confident in the QB. And You don't, you don't think Penn State is? What's that? Penn State might be. I mean, I'm not confident with them, but I think Drew Allaire – you don't think they're confident in their quarterback? I think they are. Well, no. He said Texas – basically say that nobody of prominence is is really confident about what, what they have at quarterback, which I – some of these bigger programs completely agree. I who just did you say? Who were the three schools? He, he was given three examples, Texas, Georgia, and Oregon. Okay, because I was going to say well, – Although, Oregon should be. Te- Texas knows who their quarterback is, so I wouldn't necessarily throw them out there. But Oregon, Georgia, some of these other big no, programs – because Quinn Ewers is good. Right, and I saw DeBoer. DeBoer came out and said that Milton is their number one guy. So, but you're right. Like every year, you lose players, you lose position players. Like, but <laughs> the problem is Georgia's won a couple of super or Super Bowls, a couple of national championships. Like Oregon's getting better and better. It's yeah, and when we're focused and, and, on Ohio State here. Yeah, and our whole point was when do those schools, the big boys, the Alabamas, the Georgias of the world, right? Those are the winners. Um. When have they had back-to-back years where they've had quarterback issues like we have? That's kind of the point of how did we get here to where we're kind of questioning uh, what's going on this year with Will Howard. I just, a better quarterback, I think, can do more. But we're in a position where we're not super confident back-to-back years in our quarterback. So that shouldn't happen, and I don't think it will going forward. I think this is just a stopgap of Ryan Day going, hey, we got the best available guy. We got Julian Sayan. We got Aaron Nolan. Things will be fine for the next three years with Julian saying, or at least two after this, and then we could get guys coming in. No one thought that this would happen. Yeah, you're right. Um, you're right. All right. We are we done here? 
think so. I think we're done. Everybody have a good weekend. Happy yeah, Easter, guys, everybody. Today's yeah, Good Friday, weekend, Sam. Did you quit eating or drinking today? Good Friday. Yeah. Like, like in the last 10 You're minutes? Not drink, right, on Good Friday? It's a Catholic thing. Yeah. Just saying. Easter? You guys, hammer you guys have a good one. Ham or turkey Easter? I don't like turkey, so I'm more of a ham guy. Yep. You're a little more Turkey Easter turkeys, egg Tasteless. I don't, it's just bland to me. Oh, dude, you put gravy on it, though. Well, it's, or just give me ham and I don't need to. Oh, there you go. You're going to go spiral ham? Little honey baked? Yeah, it doesn't sound bad. I'm not sure what we're doing. We're going to my mom's. Get the candy for the kid, Easter egg hunt. Eat the oh, least dude, daycare's egg. been giving him candy and cupcakes for birthdays the last three weeks. Yeah. He's he's discovered sugar, and it's not a good thing. Yeah, let's go, kid. Get a hy hyperactive. Bang off the walls. All right, have a good weekend, everybody. Michigan care, still man. sucks. Good to see you guys.